Greetings fellow mages, Exalt here, bringing you your daily dose of magic mana strike. Quick question, what do you do when your butt was just royally handed to you by amazing players with an amazing strategy? Well, you create a content out of it. Welcome to today's video. It's a new week. It's a new day for us to play magic mana strike. We're waiting for updates. Uh, the Aether Squall Ancient um, balancing patch is going to arrive anytime soon. I know it's midnight Pacific time, right? If you have, if you miss those updates uh, by any chance, I'm gonna put a link down in the description below, um, so you can uh, get yourself up to speed about what's going to happen with that balancing patch. Um, I was hoping to create this content several days ago because I wanted to explore in this one particular strategy, but I didn't have the composition or the or the creatures to make up for it. So, uh, although the the Today's video is going to talk about my losses. The losses were brought about by one particular strategy which I am absolutely a fan of and I'm happy that I got to match with these um, with this, uh, with these amazing players. And the strategy that I'm talking about, of course, is Swarm. Now, apart from uh, split pushing, I am a fan of that Swarm strategy, whereas many players would put big, strong creatures trying to plow through their lanes and, you know, winning winning their matches through that. I think there's beauty in just using small creatures, but overwhelming your opponents with so many creatures that, you know, it's just, it just ends up being disgusting for them. There's, there's a, there's a, there's something about it that I like. Uh, so Swarm, Swarm is our topic for today. Now, some people might think that the strategy is super straightforward and all you have to do is just drop creatures one after the other right creating that quote-unquote swarm but there's more to it than just that remember that usually when you're using the swarm strategy you have smaller creatures or creatures with less HP um, so you're going to make up for that for that deficit with sheer numbers all right that's why it's called swarm when you use swarm you don't necessarily just stick to a single lane harass but you can also um, split push, right? Just because you're using swarm doesn't necessarily mean it has to form in one particular area. It could be, you know, both lanes if you if you want. But most swarm strategies will employ a single lane harass, and that's what we're going to take a look at, right? Um, so here we'll see two videos of my losses, of course. Um, one coming from Garak and another coming from a Sorin gameplay. So we're gonna start with Garak. And boy, I, I love this strategy. It's just, you know, when 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 the when the swarm starts forming, you, you, my my heartbeat just starts, you know, uh, beating faster. Right, my heart just starts beating faster. It gets my my, my adrenaline um, pumping. And even in the end, if I don't, you know, win, it, it's there's beauty in in the swarm strategy. So here we're playing against. Um, how do you read this? Chin, ah, uh, na, 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 do, go. Chin, uh, oh, never mind, milk, right. And I'm trying to learn um, hiragana and katakana, but not yet. All right, let's, let's pause there for a moment and let's take a look at what just happened. So he placed his Garak right here in, in the middle, right, or in, in, in the mid portion of his uh, field, right. And Garak, of course, one of his um, passive abilities is that he generates boars every now and then, right? And what he did was he placed his Hedron Scots right here. And he will sacrifice them using this card right here that transports or sacrifices all of those creatures and transports them in front of the main guardian. And it was totally unexpected. Unlike the Wargate strategy, where you have a small Wargate forming um, near the guardian that's being targeted by the opponent. This one is fairly straightforward. You sacrifice a bunch of creatures and an equivalent number of zombies are going to be created and will be formed in front of the, in front of the, uh, of the main guardian. And why do I like this strategy? It's, Remember that a lot of people have been preparing for Tezzeret's Aether Squall and Reaver Demon combo. Both of them are flying. So a lot of players have begun placing a lot of air support in their, uh, in, in their decks, right? But what this player does is so amazing 
that after he sacrifices the entire bunch, including the ravens, by the way, he would put fog to protect them. Timing is everything. And if you take a look at my, if you take a look at my, uh, my hand, the only thing I can use to defend would be this, right? Uh, the, the circle of pain. I cannot use a Sylvan Advocate because fog will, you know, prevent any long range or any range damage to um, damage the, the the creatures that are inside the fog. And neither can I use the Skull Catapult. And I had to think really quickly in order for me to defend through that. But I didn't realize that he was going to use fog. So I end up messing, you know, messing the entire um, defense. And what I did was I placed a spider, which was wrong. It was so badong. It's bad and it's wrong, right? And I, I absolutely screwed that part. So what he did was he just um, punched his way through by putting a uh, venge vine, right? And here I am trying to struggle. And I thought, okay, that was, uh, <laughs> I managed to defend, but in one go. And he's gonna do it again. In one go, he managed to chip away half of more than half of my tower self. Here comes the Venge Vine. Here comes the zombies. And in less than two minutes, actually in less than a minute and a half, it was the, the match was over. Isn't that an amazing strategy? I mean, I lost, and I should feel pretty salty about it. But this guy, this guy has the right intentions, <laughs> which is to just be straightforward. He, he's he's probably busy and um, you know uh, uh, time is very essential for this guy so he can't wait so that's why he's yes he has a very straightforward strategy see that swarm you don't necessarily have to stick to the you know uh, traditional mindset where you have to plow through the uh, plow through the uh, lanes first before you just even destroy one of the main guardians all right Oh, newcomers. Welcome, newcomers. Uh, to all those of you guys from Death Watch who's watching this, shout out to everyone. And anyone who's supporting the channel, thank you guys. Love y'all. All right, so um, to end today's session, I think I've already made my point, right? Swarm may be a straightforward strategy, um, but you can be very creative about it, especially with that strategy uh, applied by... Okay, I'm going to try to read this name. Chin A Na... That's a... China go milk. Oh, wow. Okay. China go milk. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so um, China go milk, uh, Garrick player, an amazing strategy. I'm going to I'm gonna take a look at, uh, at that and review it even further and maybe come up with a video how to prepare yourself and defend against that. Okay, good. Next, we're going to take a look at this Soren gameplay coming from, this one's relatively easier to read, level one. All right, so just when you thought Sorin was already on his way out because Tezzeret has been just dominating the the meta and so so does uh, Garak, right? Um, here we're gonna watch a video, a very simple strategy. In the past, what what Sorin players would do combine their abilities with uh, com combine the comes into play ability with the blinding mage, giving the blinding mage a second breath of life in case it gets hit because it's very fragile, right? But here in this video, he doesn't do that, but instead he protects, guess what? The crows. The crows, a two mana creature that produces four crows in the field, right? Being protected by that zombifying ability of, uh, of Sorin. That's, it'll, it'll take a total of eight individual hits in order for the crows to be destroyed, right? <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it was so quick. Okay. Who said Swarm was slow? Nope. Not these two guys. Alright. Uh, so, uh, I've seen some Swarm players even protect the Emeria Angel. Which is, which is very viable. I mean, the Emeria Angel just walks very, very fast. And it produces birds as well. And it, it, it attacks very fast. And it also has... Uh, it is also flying, right? So that's also viable right there. It, you can... You can base your swarm out of the Emeria Angel, but this one, man, the crows. Why is it tough to defend against the crows? All right, so some of you might be thinking, what? What kind of notion is that? Number one, the crows is just two mana cost. 
If you try to bomb that with a ratchet bomb, for example, which is three mana cost, even if you wipe out the entire thing, mana-wise, the player who used the crows still has an edge because he's one one up you as far as mana goes, right? So he, he dropped a two mana creature, you destroyed it with a spell that costs three, so he still won one mana, right? You certainly won't use Circle of Pain for that. So that makes it very, you know, it makes it a very interesting strategy. I hope you guys are, I hope you guys are following. I'm not angry or anything, just a little passionate about this game because uh, the losses may be losses, sure. And you know, we're learning from them. That, that's, that's what, that's what this game is all about. All right, that's a swarm strategy, you guys. And he's going to do it fairly soon. He's just waiting for, you know, the right timing. Here comes the, the crows. Here comes Soren. Eight individual hits. So you'll probably need a spider or an area of effect damage in order for you to wipe out that. And even if you ratchet bomb a set of crows that have been zombified by Soren, it'll still take two ratchet bombs, right? I hope you guys are uh, enjoying the game because the game isn't just about, you know, the meta. There are a lot of other strategies you can employ and many of them are fun. So I hope you guys keep on exploring and keep on playing, keep on grinding. If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you'd like to see new content uh, or if you have any new ideas about what content you'd like to see, make sure to put them down in the uh, in, in the comment section below. And as usual, I will see you in the next one. Exalt signing off. Peace.